So last week, um, <laughs> at the end of the week, on Friday, no less, um, AMD decided to uh, quote unquote drop um, FSR 3. It was launched with two titles on PC, uh, Sporfoken and uh, Immortals of Avium. Um, I've done a video on it. Alex has been busy on Forza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so, Sporfoken just got me through it. <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. The, the original plan was that uh, I'd just do a quick look. You know, here's a quick look at, for, uh, at uh, FSR 3 before um, Alex takes a longer look at it because I had the HDMI 2.1 capture card and Alex was right. busy with Forza. My my quick look turned into a 20-minute video, which which, <laughs> you know, turned out to be quite a lot more effort than I intended to put Not quick. Not quick. So, yeah, please do check that out. But um, one thing that I was thinking of doing for the video, but didn't really have the time mm -hmm. uh, or the energy, to be frank, was um, the concept of how FSR 3 could be deployed on console because um, we've kind of ruled it out in, in prior discussions. But obviously the code itself works. It, you know, it's cross-vendor. It's a compute shader. It'll work on anything, basically. And um, now this week, um, Ascendant Studios, the creators of Immortals of, Avi of Avium, said they're looking into FSR 3 on consoles, um, which was enough to make me fire up my old Frankenstein PC, which you can see out in the background there. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is the, actually the Xbox Series X CPU paired with a GPU, the RX 6700, that has a lot in common with the uh, the makeup of the PlayStation 5 GPU. So it's, you know, basically as close as you're going to get to a console in PC form. And let's take a look at FSR 3 running on it. Now, I'm going to start off with what I would expect to be the use case for FSR 3, which is to take um, a game that's targeting 60 frames per second and move it into high refresh rate territory beyond 60. And... Um, it's tricky, <laughs> I think, is, is the takeaway. Um, 1080p output uh, here. I'm actually using FSR performance mode, so it's 540p internal. And you kind of have to expect that, right? Because bearing in mind the game launched with like 720p internal resolution targeting 60, um, then, yeah, obviously there there's got to be some realism involved here. 1080p 120 on the capture, but we're getting about a 90 frames per second average. It can go from like six, sorry, 70 odd to 100, I think is the delta. John, that's not really what we want from a high refresh rate experience with FSR 3. I think it just doesn't really hit the target. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> this is a tough one to talk about because I have not seen this at all myself yet. So. Just based on the, the musings you've been sharing, some of the some of the stuff. With especially... There will be some capture that you can look at, but not now, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's too late. I can't see it. But uh, I mean, it do, the the biggest takeaways from everything you've said is just the lack of proper VRR and V-Sync and everything. And like the kind of judder you get when you dip outside the range, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, in the main content, it is the case that it seemed to be only V-Sync that works, which basically means that you can propel yourself into the high refresh rate window. Yeah. Sorry, I, I meant that V-Sync well, yeah. works. It's No V-Sync doesn't work, but even though it's V-Sync, it's not VRR. So you, it's get, not VRR, you get the, you get no. the judder. That's the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, right? And I can actually show this with this bit of footage here, which is uh, shot from my own LG uh, C10, where you can see the frame rate on the top right there, and you can see the refresh rate on the bottom, and um, it's basically locked to 118 uh, hertz, which yeah. is basically where it's getting a VRR signal, but not actual any variable refresh rate right, information. Right. So the question is whether that would apply on consoles. If it if it does, then it's probably a write off. Uh, if if somehow system level VSync does work. Uh, on Xbox and PlayStation, for example. Well, it wouldn't work on PlayStation without bespoke coding, but on Xbox, maybe it would work. I suspect not. But it's not really... I think the bottom line is it's not really what you want FSR 3 to be doing. It's kind of like 120 or bust, um, yes. I, I think, personally, or very yeah, close yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you have seen this footage, which is uh, an experiment I did earlier, which is... Um, this is an 1800p output resolution... Um, 60 frames per second with FSR balanced mode 
and it is mostly 60 frames per second. And I didn't actually say what this footage was. I just uh, dropped it on our Slack channel and asked uh, everyone what they thought. So Alex, I'm going to ask you what you think. Um, I think it reminds me a lot of what I saw when I was doing my testing uh, for DLSS 3 uh, back in the day, like when I, because I, th I thought back then like DLSS 3 can do 30 to 60 FPS conversions as long as the, the content is appropriate for it. So no high camera movement, uh, a lack of like dramatic third person animation. Uh, and just a lot, a lot less parallax. And I think the footage you dropped showed off really well that if you've got motion vector data and you also have um, uh, like these flu fluid motion frames uh, that they also use with it, the uh, I always forget the f word of this thing. What is that other technique it, called? It <laughs> they call it FMF. Uh, but uh, these the, fluid motion frames. Yeah, but there's a more generic term for it. Uh, I forget it. Sorry, don't worry about it. But when you combine <laughs> those two techniques, you can actually make compelling animation interpolation and it, it looks fine enough the thing that i would doubt though is like whether it holds up for a broader range of content necessarily and broader range of styles and yeah. lighting and also input latency is a whole other question but i found that at yeah. least on dlss back in the day that 30 to 60 input latency in the games i tried it in i would definitely not want to play with a mouse that's for sure it would, well absolutely yeah but this is about consoles so yeah so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah well it's definitely laggier that's for sure but it's not unplayably bad mm -hmm. um yeah and if you think about it there's such a broad range of different input lags across a, a vast range of console games and i think people just generally tend to get on with it you know that's yeah. it's only when yeah. you've got when you've got high input lag plus frame rate drops that you move into this sort of unacceptable territory. And, you know, if you think about it, on the PS360 era specifically, there were a ton of games on Xbox that would double buffer and a lot of games on PlayStation 3 that would triple buffer, therefore... That's a big difference, yeah. Dude, I just realized... Laggier. That's that's yeah. why they that's why they use triple buffery on there. It's the <laughs> it's triple. triple. <laughs> we finally got to the bottom of it. <laughs> you can't double yes, buffer on the buffery. triple. <laughs> yeah. So one thing that I'm curious about is obviously anti lag plus is uh, limited to RDNA three for reasons that I don't think have been explained um, from AMD's perspective uh, necessarily. Yeah, um, it seems like a software lock. I don't understand why. Yeah, because yeah, obviously reflex on NVIDIA side at least applies to any RTX capable GPU. But that would yeah, be one and thing older. I'd and older, yeah. And uh, one thing mm -hmm. I'd be really curious about then is like FSR three on console, like would they be using the equivalent of anti lag plus things there? Probably, it, right? Isn't isn't that sort of thing the sort of thing they should be doing anyway? They should be, but yeah, obviously not every developer. Like we've seen so many Unreal Engine four titles launch on like PlayStation consoles with like obscene input latency, even though they don't need it, right? So like, it's it's more of a developer question at that point. But I would I would hope if that FSR three is launching on console that it also has a great amount of input latency documentation. You know, like saying like how you can reduce it on the console side even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's an interesting discussion that we were having based on this 60 FPS footage is that, I mean, obviously, Wartles of Avium shipped with a, a FSR Ultra Performance Mode, so it's basically upscaling to 4K from 720p. And this is more of a balance between higher native resolution, but getting to 60 FPS with frame generation. So it's kind of like a balance of frame generation artifacts versus FSR 2 artifacts. Yeah. And it's actually quite interesting... I think based on my testing with FSR 3 is that the uh, FSR 2 artifacts are, are more intrusive to, uh, to the presentation than the FSR 3 yeah. frame generation artifacts. Which <laughs> yeah. Just... So you've got this interesting idea of balance between two different systems that will introduce artifacts and the extent to which you might want to favor one over the other or to balance them in, in favor of image quality. Uh, versus input lag or stuff like that. I'm I'm very curious to see a um, whether Ascendant Studio do actually ship something with FSR three on console and what form it's going to take. I mean, I've put forward two different potential scenarios here of how it could be deployed, or maybe, maybe they've got their own. Yeah. Maybe there's some you know uh, secret source that we're just not aware of. But I don't think so. Um, I was just surprised. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I should point out about this 60 FPS footage, right, is that um, it, you you do need overhead above 30 to make it work. The game's kind of got to run at 40 FPS 
uh, be that sort of ballpark to, to lock to 60. Uh, if the base frame rate goes below that, then, you know, basically you don't get 60 on the output. And Ugh. that kind of puts into question the whole point of doing it. In terms of performance testing, it was mostly at 60. Um, I did try with FSR performance mode, which would be preferable for obvious reasons, but it just dropped a few, you know, quite a lot more frames. Whereas with balanced, it was mostly 60 with just some drops. Issue being that when it does drop, it, you know, VSync doesn't really behave the way it normally does with right. non frame gen, so that there are other issues there. Certainly an interesting tool that developers have to play with. And I'm going to be interested to see how they how they deploy it. I mean, there's going to be a lot of games that probably do sort of run at, say, 40 FPS that aren't fast action games yeah. that might just look better by using frame generation. Uh, my, my feeling on this is that it's, and I said this before, but I think it's still best suited to somewhat lesser demanding games to get up to 120. Like, let's say you have like a side-scrolling kind of action game or something like that, and you're already getting 60 of enough headroom there but maybe not enough headroom to get actual 120 frames per second uh yeah. this might be something worth looking at right right uh, yeah possibly and, yeah. yeah the slower the game movement the the better frame generation is <laughs> that's the bottom that's line. true that's true yeah yeah one thing i do want to quickly insert at this point since we're talking about 1080p 120 is that i did actually try um 1080p 120 with fsr ultra performance mode which will look horrible. Let's make no bones oh. about it. But I just wanted to see the exact level of frame rate that I, you know, maximum frames that I could extract from uh, Immortals of Avium at 1080p. But it didn't really make any difference. And I suspect that's because we're likely CPU limited. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it can only sort of upscale up from whatever the input is. And if the input is limited by CPU, that's that's problematic, right? You're not going to get 120 it's just um, been really interesting. First of all, I was pleasantly surprised to see how good 60 FPS looked. Um, but at the same time, it did reinforce to me that a lot of what we said a few weeks ago about expectation management with FSR 3 is kind of borne out. Uh, it has a cost. It's not just, you know, two times frame rate for, for nothing, you know. But certainly an interesting experiment. I enjoyed it. Um, if I'd had more time, I'd have done Sporfoken as well. But mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I didn't. Sporfoken. Because that one is all, seemingly already running quite well at 60 now on consoles. Yeah, so, it is now. Uh, running better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, certainly an interesting tool for developers. Um, I do think the uh, FSR 3 itself on PC needs more work. And uh, the, the comment I got from AMD about VSync off not working um, suggests that they are, work, they are looking to improve the matter there. Um, so let's just quickly... Um, uh, address a couple of supporter questions we had on this topic. This one from Zephyr. Hi DF exclamation, hi DF team exclamation point. The latest patch notes for Immortals of Avium state uh, will have more information on FSR 3 for consoles in the future. How would frame generation on consoles work here? Is there any chance this will be a good experience? Uh, well, there is some chance. I think we've just proven it. I don't think 120 is doable. I might be wrong there, but I, I, that does seem like the most obvious target for a game that's already targeting 60. Um, and the other option is to improve image quality at the expense of um, frame generation um, artifacts if you're targeting and uh, latency, 60 yeah. frames per second. Uh, this one from uh, my favorite uh, supporter name at the moment with the uh, uh, notable exception of agonizing rectal pain. Uh, Dr. I Crap and Shit <laughs> says, will RTX 3000 series owners be able to use DLSS super resolution with FSR3 frame gen? And that's... Uh, unfortunately, no. Yeah. Um, the thing that annoys me a bit about Immortals of Avium is that um, obviously it is a system limitation with FSR three frame generation. It requires FSR two inputs, right? And I can understand that. You know, they explained it to us at Gamescom, but at the same time, they've locked out um, DLSS from using um, uh, native resolution and FSR two inputs. There's no reason why they had to do that, and um, it just. Yep makes life difficult for us because we can't do a absolute apples to apples comparisons of actual frame generation. Maybe something can be hacked around in that, but I'll try. Uh, good fun. Good luck with that, Alex. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Alex. <laughs> yeah. 